HEAD OF RUSSIA'S FEDERAL DRUG CONTROL AGENCY SAYS THAT THE UNITED STATES REFUSAL TO DESTROY OPIUM POPPY CROPS IN AFGHANISTAN IS LEADING TO HEAVY DRUG USE IN RUSSIA. RUSSIAN FEDERAL DRUG CONTROL SERVICE CHIEF VICTOR IVANOV SAYS THE AMOUNT OF NARCOTICS BROUGHT INTO RUSSIA HAS INCREASED TWOFOLD SINCE THE U.S. INVADED AFGHANISTAN IN 2001. IVANOV SAID, QUOTE, AFGHAN HEROIN AMOUNTS TO 90 PERCENT OF ALL DRUGS SOLD IN RUSSIA. ANNUAL SUPPLIES STAND AT 38.5 TONS OR 5 BILLION SHOTS. Ivanov also says that at the same time, the Taliban's share in Afghan drug production is minimal. He said, quote, Nevertheless, the NATO command is focused entirely on this minority producer and generously lets local Afghan authorities combat the remaining 99% of drug production. According to his office's data, there are up to 5 million drug addicts in Russia, and half of them are addicted to Afghan heroin. Tens of thousands of people die in Russia due to drug addictions annually. Ivanov says it is time to formally declare Afghanistan's phenomenal narcotics production to be a threat to international peace and security. And uh, as if those things I've stated so far aren't enough evidence for you, the fact that opium use has skyrocketed since we invaded Afghanistan, and the fact that uh, Russia knows it's because of us, that heroin addiction and such is going up. Uh, if you're still skeptical, I'm not going to play the clip here because I think a lot of it's been seen so much and um, I don't know, it might get in it, uh, YouTube might say it's a copyright because it's a Fox News video and you're allowed to play s uh, short segments and stuff, but I don't know, if I played the whole report they might try to censor me, but um, just search uh, Geraldo Opium, that's it, in YouTube, search Geraldo, G as in uh, good, E-R-A-L-D-O, Opium, Geraldo Opium. And uh, the first link that will come up is Fox News. We tolerate the cultivation of opium poppies. No joke. That's ig exactly that title. Pretty much sums it up. It shows her all the walking around to the troops, uh, who are guarding and actually help. They're helping them cultivate an opium poppy field, and the troops are saying, "Yeah, we we got to do it, or else the big evil terrorists are going to get it." That's really what it is. It's absolutely mind blowing. So our government has a completely illegal war of aggression in the Middle East and Afghanistan. It kills a bunch of their uh, innocent civilians. Um, and then also, just to add insult to injury, they get into the opium uh, trade. If you think that they're not making huge amounts of money over there by controlling the world, the majority of the world's opium supply, you better think again. I mean, this is the definition of corruption huge corruption that is just it literally makes me feel slightly sick to my stomach knowing that our government using taxpayers money is over in Afghanistan uh, helping cultivate one of the most addictive and destructive substances ever opium and um, you know opium in itself if used very sparingly could be probably a great plant to help you know uh, heal pain and things but it's just people are weak to it and they get addicted quick and man it's destructive so yeah our government that we all pay taxes to is uh, helping spread opium around the world to get your kids addicted and then what happens they get addicted they get caught with it you know they get pulled over they're swerving or whatever they find the cop finds a bunch of heroin on them they get thrown in prison and then they uh, you know just keep your kid in the system that way it's all interlinked you know they keep this illegal as a just you know another thing with the war on drugs they keep it illegal because that's just one more reason uh, just one more power they have over you if they can make this substance illegal so say they find a, a joint on you or a, a tiny bit of marijuana now they can do whatever they want with you they can search you you know all, all probable causes there so if they have that illegal it gives them a power to be tyrannical in so many other ways you know if they think you're uh, selling drugs they have a reason to search your house you know, with, quote, probable cause or whatever. Um, so there's so many reasons why drugs are illegal. And then how disgusting is it they make drugs illegal and then they help uh, bring the drugs in here with this black op uh, drug trade with uh, the opium in Afghanistan. All right, um, I'm also going to find, going to see if I can find a clip of a CIA plane full of cocaine that crashed. One second. A Gulfstream jet that crash-landed in Mexico in late September bearing a load of nearly four tons of cocaine was used by the CIA for trips between the U.S. and Guantanamo Bay. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Can I speak as a, 
uh, a retired uh, international covert operative for the Drug Enforcement Administration. Uh, what we're uncovering here through the hard and courageous work of journalist Bill Conroy is something nobody, uh, Central Intelligence, FBI, they don't want this out there. They don't want anybody peeking under the rugs that Mark is talking about, about this plane crash carrying four tons of cocaine. Any kind of corruption you could imagine occurs. And when you talk about four tons of cocaine coming into the, into the United States uh, with the involvement of a man who worked as, as a, a pilot for CIA, DEA, and FBI, who was obviously somebody who was a shaker and a mover. His jet crashed in late September of this year in the Yucatan. Um, it, it, you know, had about four tons of coke on it, and it was it was uh, it flew out of Fort Lauderdale um, to Mexico, and from Mexico to Colombia, uh, Rio Negro, Colombia, is where it took off from, which is just outside of Medellin, and you know, it obviously picked up the coke in, in Colombia and was headed back uh, toward our neck of the woods. Yeah, and that's it, the route. It, it, right. And it was gonna it was gonna land at an airport. Um, you know, again in the Yucatan, probably from what I've been able to gather, loaded down with that much cocaine and had to refuel. Yeah, exactly. As they said, someone didn't grease the deal right. In the airport they were gonna land at, there was a ship change, and they wouldn't let them land. So they went to another airport, tried to land, they wouldn't land there, and they basically got stranded in the air, ran out of fuel, and had to ditch it, and that's how they got caught. So it was, it was a um, you know deal that went bad, apparently. What's come out on it so far is the jet that they were flying, you know, we got the FAA records on it, and, um, you know, the Europeans have been looking into the rendition flights that the CIA, the agency, was, was running for... Uh, you know, Guantanamo, and these tail numbers uh, on this jet that crashed show up uh, in some of their research as being used, this jet being used for at least three flights to Guantanamo between 03 and 05. So if that's not a huge revelation to people who, you know, have this just total false view of our government, you know, my country, right or wrong, that, you know, our, our government's just some benevolent, wonderful force uh, trying to help the world and is doing everything in our best interest. I, I have concrete evidence right here uh, with the Afghanistan opium trade and then also uh, this plane, the CIA plane crashing full of cocaine that uh, yeah you're living in la la land. Our government is involved in some of the most horrendous drug operations uh, just criminal violent wars and just this huge campaign to destroy every any little smidgen of freedom that's left in this world and everything good our government's directly involved being controlled by the dark occult force known as the Illuminati and the drug trade is a big part of that so uh, one thing people will say you know I love this the conspiracy quote debunkers they say well if there was a big conspiracy this information would get out there's no way everyone could keep quiet well this information does get out we have it right here like I'm telling you it just is kept down low it's the you know they control the mainstream media they make sure you know this isn't this thing with the plane crashing wasn't you know they try to keep it as low as possible Thank, thankfully with the internet we can get information out but you know they uh, they're not too happy with the internet and they're talking about censoring that um so man, yeah, things are just really heating up. But yeah, so they they say if they're they the people who tried to debunk it, I've heard everything, and I can ref I'm pretty good at refuting it. They say if there was evidence of conspiracy, it would get out. Well, we have tons of evidence, and that's what this show is all about. And I'm presenting some of it to you right now. So just I mean, if you just think about that though, this is just something just so incredible that our government would have a war on drugs but then be some of the main people um, you know pushing the drugs selling the drugs bringing the drugs in and involved in the drug trade and that is just it's pretty amazing I mean that's the instant drugs are made illegal their price what I don't know at least triples if not more so um, I mean like during prohibition alcohol 
was, it's funny during prohibition I think alcohol in a lot of ways was easier for some some people to get and but it was more money you know because once something's illegal it's instantly going to be worth more value just because with the risk involved of selling it to Afghanistan and the fact that uh, Russia knows it's because of us that heroin addiction and such is going up uh, if you're still skeptical I'm not going to play the clip here because I think a lot of, it's been seen so much and um, I don't know it might get in it, uh, YouTube might say it's a copyright because it's a Fox News video and you're allowed to play uh, short segments and stuff but I don't know if I annual supply stand at 38.5 tons or 5 billion shots Ivanov also says that at the same time the Taliban's share in Afghan drug production is minimal he said quote nevertheless the NATO command is focused entirely on this minority producer and generously lets local Afghan authorities combat the remaining 99 percent of drug production according to his office's data there are up to five million drugs played the whole report they might try to censor me but um just search uh, Geraldo opium that's it in YouTube search Geraldo G as in uh, good E R A L D O opium Geraldo opium and uh, the first link that will come up is Fox News. We tolerate the cultivation of drug addicts in Russia, and half of them are addicted to Afghan heroin. Tens of thousands of people die in Russia due to drug addictions annually. Ivanov says it is time to formally declare Afghanistan's phenomenal narcotics production to be a threat to international peace and security. And uh, as if those things I've stated so far aren't enough evidence for you, the fact that opium use has skyrocketed since we invaded. The head of Russia's Federal Drug Control Agency says that the United States' refusal to destroy opium poppy crops in Afghanistan is leading to heavy drug use in Russia. Russian Federal Drug Control Service Chief Viktor Ivanov says the amount of narcotics brought into Russia has increased twofold since the U.S. invaded Afghanistan in 2001. Ivanov said, quote, Afghan heroin amounts to 90% of all drugs sold in Russia.